Hello, I'm Councillor Andy McGregor. Um, I'm Chair of the Amenities and Environment Committee on Lansing Parish Council. In this video, I review the public consultation on the £2.15 million proposed plan for Monks Rec. Before I start, I thought I'd put that amount into perspective. The total income from the parish precept this year is £322,000. If the council did nothing else with that money, it would take six years and eight months to pay off the £2.15 million. If we took a third from the precept each year, it would take just over 20 years to pay the bill. Nothing, nothing at all in the plan is going to last that long without even more money being spent on repairs and maintenance. Now, on to the subject of this video, the public consultation. It was in two parts. The first part was conducted in mid-2017. This was asking the Lansing public what they want from the park. This is the consultation which resulted in the plan. The second part of the consultation was to ask the public what they thought of the plan. Let's consider the first part. It was divided into three parts, a consultation with adults, a consultation with kids, and a consultation with Lansing youth. It does sound quite thorough until you drill down into the numbers. I am only going to tell you about the adult consultation to give you a flavour of just how bad it was. Obviously the age group of the kids and the youth consultation are very, very obvious. The adult consultation was conducted among 114 individuals from Sir Robert Woodard Academy and nine from Keep Lancing Lovely. Let's look at the ages of all those individuals that consulted in the adult, remember adult, part of the survey. Here is the pie chart. Now this bit here, the blue bit, that is the ones that were 15 or younger. That's 65% of those consulted were 15 or younger. This is the adult survey. Only seven, these little, this little slice here and the one next to it, only seven, not 7%, seven of the individuals were 26 or more. Just seven. So that means that just seven people in the whole consultation were over the age of 26 out of a population of over 18,000 in Lansing. Based on this public consultation and this public consultation alone, which includes just that seven people, the previous administration went on to propose the £2.15 million design and spent £72,000 of public money on consultants and designers and, of course, two signs. What would they say in Dragon's Den? Would they have risked the £72,000 with the expectation of finding the £2.15 million all based on this dodgy data? I don't think so. One and a half years later, they didn't move quickly. One and a half years later, a further public consultation was taken on the actual plan. So they had the plan drawn up, then they asked the public what they thought of it. Just 282 Lansing residents were asked to comment on the plan. That's just 1.4% of the population of the village. Having sat through many, many, many hours of statistics lectures as a student, I can tell you this is not enough. It's all to do with confidence limits. Please don't switch off. I promise I will be quick. It's obvious that one person's opinion doesn't tell you what the majority of the village think. Do 10 people? Probably not. Or 50? Still maybe not. 100? Maybe, maybe not. Um, how many people you need to consult before you can be confident in your figures? The population of the village is over 18,000 and the calculations are out there regarding the sample size required. Before I get to that, let's talk about the kinds of questions you can ask. You need to ask open questions. Let's take a simple scenario with an open question. OK, I have two ties here that I'm thinking of wearing to a meeting tonight. Which one do you think I should wear? 
that's an open question and we will get people making uh, unbiased choice. Um, now, here's the opposite kind of question, which is called a leading question. Here's my leading question. Tell me what you think of my lovely tie. You've already been told I think the tie is lovely and you've been told it's mine. You are far more likely to agree it's lovely. And you have to look me in the eye and tell me you don't like my tie. That also introduces bias. And that's what happened with the second public consultation. The questioner asked what people thought of the proposed improvements to Monk's Rec. And the people proposing the improvements to Monk's Rec were the ones asking the question. So they were being led to agree that they were improvements and they would have to look the people who proposed the improvements in the eye to say they disagreed, which they wouldn't do. So secondly, the numbers were too low. For a simple binary choice, like my two ties, you need to ask 400 people. And for a more complex choice, similar to the survey, or probably less biased, um, you would need to ask 1,000 people to achieve a confidence level of 95%. That means that you get the same result from the survey 19 times out of 20 times you ran the survey. However, the item which got the highest level of approval from this second set of public consultation was voted for by just 78 residents. That's 0.42% of Lansing's population. But the previous administration ploughed on regardless and had their signs made and spent even more public money. Back to Dragon's Den. Would the Dragons invest based on this consultation? I don't think so. The problem is that the preset payer of Lansing would have had no choice. The cost of this badly researched project would have been borne by the preset payer of Lansing for the next two decades. Thank goodness the previous administration were so slow at getting things done. And thank goodness the chairman of the committee who made these atrocious spending decisions did not stand for re-election to parish. My final video in this series will tell you what we actually plan to do with Monk's Rec for the immediate future. Thank you.